I've taken the Security Plus among a bunch of other certs, and in this video, I want to cover clearly how can you actually pass the Security Plus. My name is Jake. I'm a system administrator at an MSP. MSP is a managed service provider. Basically, we handle IT infrastructure for other companies. And today, I'm going to walk through what Security Plus is, who it's really for, the resources that'll help you pass it on your first try, and a timeline for actually getting it done. So let's start with the obvious. Why do people even bother with Security Plus? Honestly, the HR filter is a big reason. This cert shows on more job listings than any other cert I think I've seen. At my company, it was required to move from level one to level two, and I know that a lot of companies are like that. If you don't have Security Plus, you don't get promoted. If you wanna do anything that's related to government or government contracts, this cert is an absolute must. It's a requirement. Doesn't matter how good you are, if you don't have Security Plus, you will not get those DOD jobs. Security Plus is a beginner-friendly cert. It's usually the first semi-serious security cert that people go after. Compared to A Plus or Network Plus, it feels cooler. It feels more fun. You're learning things like crypto, hashing, access controls, logs, and it feels like actual cybersecurity. And again, just in the general job market, Security Plus feels like it's everywhere. If you're trying to pivot into IT or go from a help desk job to a higher level job, Security Plus is going to be something that you want to have on your resume. So is it actually worth it? I think yes, and let me explain why. It's worth it if you're new to IT and you need something on your resume to prove that you're serious. Again, if you want to move beyond help desk roles or get those government or DOD job roles, it's definitely worth it. And if you just want to have a general solid security baseline, it's probably good to have. Now, there are some cases in which you can skip the security plus. If you're already in the industry and have a higher level cert like CCNA, AZ-104, AZ-500, security plus might be something that you can skip. If you're not interested in security stuff at all and you know that you want to be just just like a sysadmin, Security Plus could probably be something you could skip. And again, if you're way past entry level and you already have a CCNA, you should probably be working on higher level certs like CCNP. But you still have that requirement that HR filters are always asking for it. So I think it's never a bad idea to get. So what does the Security Plus actually test you on? Let's break it down into those five domains. Firstly is attacks, threats, and vulnerabilities. This is where you see things like malware types, phishing, DDoS stuff, and some vulnerability scan and basics. You'll also see some social engineering tactics like the typical don't click on sketchy email trope. If you work in IT at all, or you're even a little bit tech savvy, this section is like completely self-explanatory. However, CompTIA loves to dress their tests up with tons of acronyms, so be ready to know what those are. Knowing the difference between a rat, a worm, a trojan, things like that. The second section is architecture and design. This is where they're going to be testing you on your ability to set up a secure network. You're not really setting things up, but you're going to see concepts like DMZs, firewalls, VPNs, load balancers, and general network segmentation. This is also where cloud security shows up, things like IaaS, PaaS. SAAS. All of this, in my opinion, is super annoying. But my advice is that you learn the diagrams for who has responsibility in which situation. If you can sketch out a network with a firewall and IPS, uh, DMZ, you're probably good to go. The third domain is implementation. This is the biggest domain, and you're going to be configuring, but really identifying secure protocols. Things like SSH, HTTPS, SFTP, all things that you use in real life. You'll be looking at some authentication stuff, MFA, security certificates, and then also some wireless security standards. You're also gonna get hit with some public key infrastructure, certificates, CRLs, OSCP, all of the alphabet soup, but to be honest with you, PKI, public key infrastructure, in my opinion as a sysadmin, is the most important and applicable section of the Security Plus. All in all, if you can understand which protocol is used in which scenario, you're probably good to go with this domain for Security Plus. Then we have operations and incident response. Here you're looking at monitoring, detection, SIMs, how to respond to incidents. You're going to get some questions on log analysis, things like spraying, brute force, rainbow tables, how to identify what is what. Honestly, here's where practice really helps because you're going to see some of these performance-based questions come up in the exam that really test your ability to differentiate between this stuff. And then lastly, there's a section on governance, risk, and compliance. This is the driest part of it. You're going to be looking at things like policies, regulations, frameworks, ISO, NIST, CISA, GDPR. This is not exciting, but this is also where CompTIA throws some curveballs. So you gotta understand what all of those acronyms are and generally what they do. This section is annoying, but if you avoid it and don't actually study for it, it can cause you to fail the test. So don't neglect it. Okay, so let's get into the important part. How do you actually pass this test without wasting months of your life? Here are the resources that I recommend. I put some links in the description. Those are affiliate links, so they help me at no extra cost to you. Understand, I would not put my name on something I didn't believe in and that I didn't use myself to pass the test. Firstly, the best resource you have are Udemy courses. In my opinion, in terms of courses, 
Jason Dion and Andrew Ramdial are going to be the best two options at your disposal. Either one's going to give you everything that you need to know. These are relatively cheap, they're structured, and I used Andrew Ramdial's and I thought it was really awesome. Next, the most important part is going to be practice exams. Jason Dion's practice exams are the gold standard for CompTIA tests. They're always the closest to what the actual test is, and it's the best gauge to know that you're ready for the exam. If you can get an 80% on Jason Dion's practice tests, again, link in the description, you know that you're ready to pass the exam. And then lastly, if you're a book person, I know that Daryl Gibson and Mike Myers have a book that's super recommended. Personally, I'm not a huge textbook guy, but if you like that format, I know they work. And then I have a strategy for how to actually use these practice exams effectively because just droning through all of them and not really paying attention isn't gonna actually help you out. Take the practice exam cold without studying for it. This is gonna tell you what you actually know and what you actually don't know. Every wrong answer, don't just mark it down, actually go through it, figure out what the concept of the question is, and then make your own flashcards or fake exam questions out of that concept. Again, you're gonna make like a little question bank, do it in a one note or an obsidian vault or something like that. And then you can quiz yourself on these questions that you're getting wrong consistently on the daily. Then you go on to the next test. Jason Dion's practice test comes with, I think, five or six of them. Every one has new questions, new concepts that you're going to see. Oh, I didn't know this. Write this down. Make a question. Continue. Keep that cycle up and keep cycling through all of them in order until you can consistently get 80%. This process is the best way to learn. Memorizing is tough to do and it's tough to actually get you ready for the exam. This is gonna show you what you got wrong, why you got it wrong, and you're gonna be forced to drill the stuff that you don't know. This is uncomfortable, but it works. There's gonna be some performance-based questions in Jason Dion's practice tests and on the actual test as well, and these tend to trip people up because it's not just A, B, C, D. You're probably gonna see some log analysis, some drag and drop, or some matching scenarios. For PBQs, I think that the best thing to do is again, use those Jason Dion exams, but you can also go on YouTube and just look up some PBQs. I was doing these while I was walking on the treadmill getting ready for this test. And if you've studied for the test, you're going to see that the PBQs are just some other way to present the same information that you've already been studying. So here's a realistic six week study plan you could follow. Week one to two, you're going to do a Udemy class. Jason Dion's or Andrew Rambayal's are my go-to. Week three to four, you're gonna start hammering practice tests and doing what I said, marking down the answers that you got wrong. Week five, you're gonna continue taking practice tests, studying the questions that you've made out of the questions that you've got wrong, and you need to take the practice tests like as if they were the real test. So sit down in the allotted time for the exam and take the practice exam in that amount of time. No distractions or anything like that. You want to simulate the real environment. And don't overthink this cert. Understand that it's not something you need to spend six months on. Six weeks is plenty of time for you to get ready for it. So when I took the Security Plus, I actually already had A Plus and Network Plus. I thought A Plus and Network Plus were both more difficult than the Security Plus. I thought it was the easiest of the three. Security Plus was full of acronyms, but once you have a solid understanding of networking, it all kind of just starts to make sense together. You got to drill those acronyms though. Like I seriously think this exam should be called the Acronym Plus as opposed to the Security Plus. Understand that there is going to be logs and log analysis in the exam. This was much more prevalent than I realized. I think that I had a PBQ that had to do with log analysis and I was actually digging through systems, seeing where some certain virus started or something like that. And then again, my method was super straightforward. I used Andrew Ramdayal's and for all of my other CompTIA tests, I had used Jason Dion's tests. When I took Security Plus, he actually didn't have any tests for it yet, so I just used ChatGPT. But now that he does have some, I highly recommend that you use them. And then career-wise, I really think this cert helped me get my first job. Again, I had A Plus and Network Plus as well, so I can't say for sure that it was this cert, but it definitely had respect when I got into the industry. I already had those three basic certs. I could focus on CCNA, which was a higher level cert. The cert is also required for promotion as my, at my company, as I said. So it feels basic, but you kind of got to have it in order to do these certain things in the industry. And then in terms of test day, I highly advise that you have taken those practice tests because it's going to simulate it the best. There's no need to cram at the very end. Um, I always think of a test as a competition between me and whoever made the test. And the time the test day comes, I've already done all my preparation for that competition. There's nothing really extra that I can do. It's go time. It's time for me to put on my best show and try my best to beat the person who made the test. I highly recommend with these CompTIA tests, use an elimination method. So first think which answers could 100% not be right. Boil it down to two answers. And then if you're still really stuck between those two answers, flag the question, pick one of them and come back to it if you have time at the end of the test. It is kind of fast. So you're gonna wanna keep things moving. And understand once you have Security Plus, 
plus. This is just the baby cert that gets you in the door in terms of cybersecurity stuff. If you want to be a true security guy, you're probably going to go on to CISA plus or CASP plus, two higher level CompTIA security certs. If you're going to Microsoft, you're probably going to get AZ500, Azure Security Engineer. SC300 is something that's super popular that I didn't even know about. It's Microsoft's Identity and Access Administrator cert. And then if you want to be hardcore down the line, you're probably going to get something like CISSP or OSCP. And then if you want to mix in some networking, you can do what I did. You can get CCNA, you can get CCNP security. You can really take these concepts and make yourself an absolute beast in IT. So like a career starting example for my estimation would be A+, Network+, plus, then Security+, plus. again, understanding Security+, plus is going to be the easiest of those three. Year two, you get CCNA or Azure Administrator, AZ-104. And then year three, you're getting those specialized security certs, AZ-700, SC-300, CISA+, plus, CASP. Long term, of course, you're thinking CCNP, Security, CISSP, making tons of money. So Security+, plus is really like a launch pad. It's not the end goal. So to wrap up, if you're brand new to IT, you need some credibility, you think you want to get into Security, Security+, plus is absolutely worth it. It's going to get past that HR filter. It's going to get you on the radar of those people who are hiring for government or DOD jobs. If you're already in and you have way higher certs, I don't really think it's really necessary. I know CISA Plus gives you a lot of the same things that Security Plus does, but understand that HR still asks for it a lot. If you do go for it, focus on Udemy practice courses and practice tests. This is the best way to get it done. Appreciate you guys being here. If you want more content regarding certs and general IT life, I have a ton of videos on all of this stuff. Thanks so much for the support lately. Again, all of the links of the things that I've mentioned are affiliate links. They're in the description and they're very, very useful. Have a great day. Be safe. Be smart. Make some good decisions and good luck with that Security Plus.